You know, compared to the book haul in May, this is going to seem, you know, more realistic. And I think that this should be more normal for most folks. But uh, there are books to talk about that came in June and even some that were actually gifts that I want to talk about. So let's do that now. Hey, what's up, bookworms and book collectors? Mike back with another book haul, this time for the month of June 2020. Uh, like I said, in May, things went kind of nuts because I was just excited to be able to go to a bookstore again. Now, unfortunately, we're not able to do that again. So, uh, but again, that's we're not allowed to talk about that. So uh, let's not do that. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the new additions to the library this month. And uh, I want to begin by just saying, hey, I don't know if I said this last month. I got this last month. It is an actual, my first leather bookmark. It is a J.R.R. Tolkien. Uh, really nice. I know it doesn't really count as a book haul, but I wanted to talk about it because it's just, it's really nice. It's so nice, in fact, that it's so thick, I don't like using it. <laughs> it's thick, and I feel like it's going to make the books actually like start to have an indention in them. So I'm not actually using it. So I'm probably just going to end up putting it over there with my Lord of the Rings stuff. But I wanted to kind of show it off because I like it so much. It's got it off Etsy. Uh, lots of great original creators there. I know that some people have problems with Etsy because they feel like you're just getting past trademarks and stuff. But, you know, sometimes they don't make exactly what you're looking for and you want exactly what you're looking for. And that's what I wanted. So that's where I got it. Let's uh, let's go on and move on to the books now. I got my first gifts from a viewer. And I thought it was really cool. And last month I talked about how I got two of the Empires of Dust books by Anna Smith Spark, but I was still missing book two, which is The Tower of Living and Dying. Well, a viewer of the channel actually hit the link I have below to my to my wish list. It actually bought me a couple of books. So I wanted to give them a thank out. Thank you to Nexus Shadow. Don't want to use their real name, and I appreciate that. Uh, but he, he actually got me the book I was missing there, Nexus Shadow by, uh, or sorry, Nexus Shadow got me uh, The Tower of Living and Dying by Anna Smith Spark. It's so bright, you can't even see it, can you? Ooh. Anyway, they're really cool covers. They all have really cool spines and stuff like that. You know, that's important to me. But I just thought that was a very, very kind gesture. And he also got me Shadow of the Conqueror by Shad M. Brooks. I don't know anything about this. I did some research after he sent it to me. And did this guy start as a YouTuber? I think he started as a YouTuber. I checked out his channel. Entertaining stuff. I especially like his stuff about... Uh, uh, how the sword, the the, uh, the the sword, the fencing in Star Wars is so bad. <laughs> I thought that was a very very entertaining video. Made me made me think of something that uh, Red Letter Media would do or something like that. But a uh, very entertaining channel. So I hope his writing is half as good. I don't know when I'll get to that. I really do appreciate. it. I just don't know when I'll get to it. Uh, schedule's just so super packed. But I will read it. And I don't do audiobooks. But someone told me that. Uh, is it Michael Kramer, the guy that does the Wheel of Time audiobooks? It's super popular. Somebody told me he does. Every time that guy does an audiobook, people let me know. I know he does that. I know he does like Hanius, and I know he does Wheel of Time because people love. And I believe he does the Cosmere too. So people love to tell me this, even though I tell them all the time. I don't do audiobooks, but they'd love to tell me. But that's, that's pretty cool. If this is a really just an independent YouTuber who, who who got his own book published, and then he has like apparently one of the best audiobook guys read. That's great. That's that has to be like the dream. I happen to be one of the only booktubers out there who has no interest in writing their own story. So I'm glad that there are others who want to do that. And then I want to end this with a little Star Wars. I talked this month about why you should read The New Jedi Order and why I love the original uh, Star Wars EU. And it led me to get this uh, Jedi Path collection that they have of Star Wars stuff that is actually still within the original extended universe or expanded universe. Sorry. Uh, is The Jedi Path, The Manual for Suits of the Force, and The Book of Sith, Secrets from the dark side, really, really good collection. Wooden slipcase, that's awesome. These are two hardbound books. I mean, it has a really cool, uh, I don't even know what you'd call this, but just a cool art for both the light side and the dark. Always love some good artwork, but this stuff inside is so cool. Hard covers, and the it isn't just the art in here. It's kind of like the Harry Potter books where they made it look like it was uh, the school books, used school books. Same thing here, journals, and each page has like stuff written by specific judges. Like you have something like, like, like Mace Windu, you have Ahsoka Tano, you have uh, Count Dooku, all these things. And it's just, it's such cool lore and stuff that isn't considered canon anymore unless you're like me and you still consider the expanded universe canon. And then the Jedi path where you have stuff from, you know, Luke Skywalker, obviously. 
uh, Tame, Luke. Uh, who else? Who else we got here? We got Ahsoka in here. We got Dooku when he was still on the light side of the Force. We got Yoda. Uh, it's just really cool that they just have all the writing. Even though I do not condone writing in your books, it's still really neat for like a journal. I, I think it's great. So sacred, said, sacred Jedi text, right? There we go, and we're not burning them down. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> one day we'll not be talking about that anymore. Maybe one day soon. Apparently they're talking about ending that. But again, getting off task. Let's keep moving on here. I've talked a lot recently about how October is going to be dedicated to horror. You know, I talk about the channel is sci-fi fantasy horror, and I've talked about in that recent video about how I plan to be amping up the sci-fi in, in 2021. I felt like the channel was starting to fall into where I was just doing mostly fantasy and sprinkling a few things for. So I want to give October that month to horror because that seems to be the one time a year, at least here in the States, where people who aren't generally into horror seem to give it a chance. They'll give it a try. So I want to dedicate that whole month to horror books that you should read. But I also wanted to do something that I've never read before. Being a huge Stephen King fan, most people can't believe I've never read Clive Barker before. I can't believe I've never read Clive Barker. Actually, that's not fair. I say I've never read Clive Barker, but I've read The Hellbound Heart. But that's like 200 pages. So I was like, okay, I've read a novella because I liked the movie Hellraiser so much. And that was years ago. But the one that people always recommend to me is Weave World. So I went ahead and picked that up. Uh, pretty good shape considering how old it is. Not a first edition, I don't think. But I think the, the printing was like 1987 was the printing of this and it's in pretty good shape for that because I, I mentioned that because the second Clive Booker Barker book I got not in great shape this was Imagica 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 I, I think it's Imagica um, Amazon Warehouse was selling this used like new does that look like like new to you anyway um, it's a book that's actually so hard to get a hardcover of that oh, oh look at this it's got writing inside of it for god's sake so yeah i've talked before about how people do crazy stuff to books and this is obviously no different all the reason i decided to keep it was because it was pretty cheap and uh yeah uh really nice versions of it are not so cheap so i said hey why not you know not everything on the on the book has to look like a, a library edition right why not uh so there we go that's what uh, i want to get into some clive barker i don't know if i'll actually get to image because this is a meaty book and i was going over my horror month plans and it is really really big and i want to make sure that i'm not rushing anything because basically i'd have to be doing like a video per day and who knows what will be going on with life by october for me to be planning to do that but i will be doing weave world Come Hell or High Water, that'll be the first one. First novel by Clyde Barker that I'll be jumping into. You guys like Clyde Barker? Let me know below. I mentioned in my recent sci-fi video that one of the books that I want to try is the Foundation Trilogy by Isaac Asimov. I feel like you need to read Asimov to keep your sci-fi dork cred, right? And I have not. I never have. I don't know why. It's always been there. And then I saw this beautiful collection from uh, Barnes & Noble that had just the trilogy, not the whole seven. And it's just so cool. It's like a 3D image. So cool. I love it. Uh, but uh, you always you got your gold-plated edges and your beautiful artwork and stuff like that. So this is a brilliant, brilliant addition that I look very much forward to diving into for the first time. And anytime I see a leather-bound book, it's got my attention, right? And that's what led me to another one. A problem that I thought I had on the channel also is... I've had an, appreh an apprehension to cover any classics because of the whole problematic thing. Anything that came out before like 2010 now apparently people have a problem with. And so to avoid, you know, the channel getting like demonetized or something, uh, I've kind of avoided some of those. But I don't think that there should be a problem if I want to cover Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. This is my wife's favorite book. I would like to talk about some Lewis Carroll and maybe try to see if I can finagle her into coming on the channel. I tried for Red Rising. She finished Red Rising and she still wouldn't. But uh, I feel like this is something she's passionate enough about. Maybe talk about it. And again, another Barnes & Noble collection that's just absolutely gorgeous. This has uh, Alice in Wonderland. This has um, Through the Looking Glass and all kinds of Lewis Carroll short stories. Uh, just about everything. I mean, it's, it's huge. It's massive. Um, yeah, I mean, just look at all these stories. I don't know if you can see that. But uh, again, Barnes Noble does some of the absolute most beautiful 
collections. I've got their Edgar Allan Poe one. I've got their Dracula one. I've got their Interview with the Vampire one. Uh, or it's actually just a Vampire Chronicles, the trilogy. But I uh, just they make such gorgeous editions. And when I saw these two, I was already getting the Isaac Asimov one. And I said, hey, why not? I'd like to cover Alice sometime next year because that would be something... I feel like I need to do because it's my wife's favorite book, like I said, and I've never read it. If you've been on the channel at all this month, you've probably seen it front facing. My birthday present for my wife was S. Morgan Stern's, aka William Goldman's The Princess Bride. Such a beautiful edition. Uh, I can't believe this is deluxe anniversary edition. So many wonderful, wonderful illustrations in here. Uh, it's not technically called an illustrated edition, but I mean, the illustrations are absolutely magnificent. It also has Buttercup's Baby in it. Uh, that's If you don't know, that's a sequel. And uh, yeah, if you, I love the movie. I read the book when I was in high school, and I don't really recall a lot of it. I remember saying I liked the movie more, but I, you know, I was a dumb teenager back then. Who knows? Uh, again, that's one of my favorite movies of all time, so I don't feel like that's saying very much. But uh, yeah, I, I can't wait to revisit this and see how it does because, again, reading from a beautiful edition like this, I mean, it's like a fairy tale, you know? as it should be. Also, 2021, besides Malazan, we're starting The Realm of the Elderlings with the Farseer trilogy. And so continued book number two of that with this beautiful illustrated edition that they're putting out in the States. This is for the first time, I think it's available everywhere, but this is the first time in the States that the Farseer trilogy has been available on hardcover. So uh, I'm hoping that these sell well enough that they keep making them because they're all beautiful, uniform, and matching. And the illustrations, of course, are magnificent. Um, I'm pretty sure they're at least committed to doing the trilogy, releasing the illustrated edition. And I can't find a single picture to show you guys. Come on now. Live video. You gotta love it. There. There's one. <laughs> anyway, there's tons of illustrations in here, just like the last one. Uh, I can't wait to get into this because it seems like Robin Hobb is very divisive. People absolutely love it or they absolutely seem to hate it. More love than hate. Uh, to what everyone has told me is that her character work is second to none. For me, characters trump everything in a story. So that sounds like music to my ears and I'm very much looking forward to it. And that's all the books this month. But wait, there's a couple more things and it's just because I don't know where else to show them. I already showed this in my weekly update. But uh, my kid got me a new coffee mug, a Harry Potter cauldron, because we're reading Harry Potter together. Uh, actually, we've kind of stalled on Goblet of Fire. It's not really clicking for him. Uh, but a uh, conversation for another time, probably. But a uh, really cool gift, Father's Day gift. Uh, you know, Apparently, he thinks that uh, I would be a good potions master. I don't know. And then, uh, if you guys didn't know, I guessed it on the Dusty Wheel. That is a Wheel of Time YouTube channel that has like weekly talk show about the series and uh, I guessed on his show right after I finished the series and he sent me a really cool mug uh, which is awesome because I there aren't a ton of Wheel of, Wheel of Time themed stuff out there. Uh, I, I know that Amazon when the series gets closer I'm pretty sure that they're going to start pumping out some of the merch much like they, the HBO did when they got uh, Song of Ice and Fire. I used to complain that you couldn't find any good merchandise and then once I did it came out and I spent probably 300 bucks on merch when it first came out. Uh, so it's really cool to have something Wheel of Time theme. And you guys know by now that not only do I collect books, I collect coffee mugs because I stopped drinking beer uh, about six months ago. And it was right before then, my, my wife had said, hey, no more beer glasses. They're taking up too much space. And I said, okay, that's fine. So I countered with coffee mugs. So if you follow the Instagram account at all, you know I always love to tweet the different coffee mugs I got. So a couple more there. And I just uh, made a deal with, uh, let's just say a crafty person who uh, is actually gonna, not really partnering with the channel, but we've got like a little bit of a, an idea of sharing content together. And I'll be happy to talk about that next month because this is handcrafted stuff and I haven't actually received them yet. But uh, really cool, I love coffee mugs. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, so guys, what was your month like? What did you get? What are you hoping to get? Drop in the comments and let me know and I'll talk to you there.